and welcome to another episode of Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her nerdy younger brother, Ron. And normally at this point, Ron would go, hello, I'm Ron. Um, But he's not here because he's shirking his podcasting responsibilities in favour of a weekend away. Um, And I would be mad at him and curse out his lack of dedication to the podcast but actually I think maybe he just has healthy work-life balance and um, we could all learn a thing or two from Ron so listen he's not here if you were on team Ron shift your ass out of it and into team Laura because I'm clearly the winner kid of the podcast Um, so I won't keep you long because without Ron here to chat to in in this introduction here bit it's just me Um, but I just wanted to say thank you very much for all your excitement on social media this week we've had a few announcements um, um, and uh, so, and so, thank you for your positivity about that. You might have seen that we've joined a podcast network. Uh, we have. We've joined a podcast network called Emmeline, which is brand new. Um, it's specifically designed to help women and non-binary podcasters. So, Emmeline are great in that. Um, normally, also to get on a podcast network, you have to be already a hit podcast, and then they want you because you've got lots of advertising stuff. Whereas Emmeline are coming to smaller podcasts like ours, little tiny indie baby and saying, hey, you, we know you're not going to earn us any money right now, but we like what you're doing and we want to nurture you and we want to change it so that uh, more women can be in podcasting. So we've joined them. Um, let's just get into the episode now. Uh, it's biology. It's pretty interesting and cool this week. Um, so get ready to learn all about how you work. <laughs> I can't believe you waited that whole time for me to eat that thing, going, are you ready? Shall we? And then the second I started recording, you, like, choked on some water and hocked it up into the microphone. <laughs> well, you've got to wet the pipes. You've got to wet the pipes before you podcast. Don't you say podcast. wet the pipes. Hello, Ron. Episode Hiya. 16. We're back in biology. I think you're going to love this episode. Really? Yeah. Good, because I garbaged that. I know the quiz went all right, but that electricity was so dry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. We've got another two weeks till we're, till we're back in those calm, calm seas. But, yeah, no, I think you're going to enjoy this one. It's, it's, it's all going to be stuff that you've, you've heard of before, and you're just going to learn how it works. Oh, I like that. And stuff you could see and punch if you wanted to. Oh, Yes, like how a zebra gets its stripes. Yeah. It's not like that, though. <laughs> um, so today, the first thing that we're going to learn about is the heart. Tagline, <gasps> the organ that beans are good for. The heart. And I'm going to put an exclamation mark next to that in my notes. OK. What can you tell me about the heart off the, off the top of your head? What do you know about it? Its structure is what we're going to be doing first. It doesn't make blood. No, the blood's already in the veins, much like a circuit. Yeah, the blood is made in bone caves. Um, The heart is a pump. I think it's got like four caves in it, like four different vestibules. Not everything's a cave. What? Not everything's a cave. No, but do you know what I mean? Like a a vestibule. I think it's got four. Um, It's got valves. Because, you know, yep. you can have to have valve surgeries. Yep, yep, yep. Ventricles, that's all. Tricuspid, bicuspid, pulmonary, aortic. No, those are sea creatures. Um, uh, <laughs> arteries go art and veins go in. Ah, uh, yes, we're going to cover that later. Veins go in, vein. Yeah. Uh, but then I, I, um, I thought uh, arteries was the way that we could remember. Yeah, <laughs> art. Go they go art. Arteries. Out, out you go. Like that. That's how I think of it. Yeah, I mean, nothing you said there was false. <laughs> so we don't call them vestibules. They're different <laughs> parts of the... What no, but uh, you actually weren't that far off. So it has two atriums which is oh. a bit like a vestibule. And then the other two bits are called ventricle. Ventri- That's ventricles. the word I was trying... Uh, did yeah. I say ventricles? No, you said vestibule, style. I'm sure I said ventricles at one point, didn't I? No, Aww, no look you at said bruise vestibules. I've just found on my arm. Aww. That's a tiny little bruise. <laughs> um, two, <laughs> two atriums. Oh, that is practically a vestibule, that, isn't it? The heart is like a little hotel. 
Yeah, two atriums and two Hartel. The Hartel. Heartbreak Hotel. Elvis. Hmm. Um, each atrium is connected to one of the ventricles, and there is a one-way valve between them. One way or another. No, one I'm way. I'm going venture, 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 ventricles. The sound of your heart beating is the sound of those valves slapping open and closed. Ugh. Yeah. That is less romantic. <laughs> I love lying on Tom's chest and listening to his heartbeat, and now I'm just going to Listening like... to his valve slap. Mmm. So, wait, what were you saying? Because I wasn't singing. I was listening, I was singing. The, so, the, the, one it goes from atrium. the atrium into the ventricle via a one-way flap. Yep, 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 yep. Um, okay. So, essentially, there's two halves to the heart, and they have slightly different purposes. Right. Do you know the two different purposes of each half of the heart? Um, one is for love... And one is for decisions. <laughs> um, no. So one is for um, cleaning the blood, processing it. Uh, no, Ron's eyebrow just did a weird flick. One is for moving the blood around, and one is for pumping it up, getting it ready and excited. Like when you're at Tower of Terror at Disneyland and you move through the queue into various different rooms, first of all. And then you like, get more and more excited as you go through. And then, whoa, you're pumped around the body. No, no, that's not quite it. Um, no. It's actually much more exciting than that. One half... More exciting than Tower of Terror. Yeah, one half pumps deoxygenated blood from the body to the lungs and around the lungs. Yeah. Do you know the word pulmonary? Yeah, pulmonary embolism. I've yeah. heard that so, on Grey's Anatomy. Pulmonary basically just means lungs. Oh. Ah. So there's the pulmonary side of the heart that pumps the, uh, stuff to the lungs, and then the other half of the heart that pumps stuff uh, pumps the newly oxygenated blood back around the body again to get deoxygenated. Okay. Okay, but you did say that this was going to be more exciting than Tower of Terror. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's... There's some let's, lies you've told here, Ron. Let's journey with some blood through the heart, okay? Well, you are excited about this, aren't you, little weasel? <laughs> have you ever touched a heart? No, I don't think so. No, I've dissected them before. It's fun. Yeah? Like a yeah. pig's heart? I think it was a sheep's heart. Hmm. I remember dissecting a pig's eye... And finding it really gross because they'd left on all of the like flesh from around the eyeball, so yeah, you could make it we blink. Put, we put one in a boy's pocket. Uh, horrible. <laughs> okay, we're going to follow some blood from the body. Okay, so do you know uh, what the vein from that... the body? What yeah. are we doing? Just doing some bloodletting? <laughs> no, from the body into the heart. The heart's in the body. You can't say from the body into the heart. From most of the body into the heart. Mm, that's more precise. Thank you very much, Ron, for being more, scientific. Much more about scientific. <laughs> um, do you know the name of the of the the blood vessel that takes deoxygenated blood into the heart? The jugular. No, it sounds like a drink that you might like. The Rio vein. <laughs> no, no, the vena cava. Oh. I do like a bit of carver. No, I've never heard of that. The vena cava. Yeah, so the vena cava is the biggest vein in the body. It takes blood into the heart from the rest of the body. There are two halves of it, one coming from the top, one coming from the bottom. The Wait, super- two halves of the same vein? Well, the vein kind of goes all the way up and down your body, but obviously your heart's halfway, so your heart takes blood from above and below. It's right, still the vena okay. Cava. Okay. Um, the superior vena cava comes from above. The inferior vena cava comes from below. That seems stupid because there's way more below than there is above. But in the, the most important stuff is above. Not for me. <laughs> I suppose that is true. <laughs> so, blood goes into the right atrium from the vena cava. Yes! That's what I've just drawn! Lovely. The atriums themselves don't pump. They have... Saggy, flappy walls. Oh no! This is don't body shame the heart. 
So they're kind of like they get inflated. Yeah, yeah. So the so the blood goes in, and then the right ventricle will pump out the blood that's already in it, and then it'll so open again. So when the vein drops the blood off in the heart, is that just a, is the is the blood just loose in the heart after that? What what, what do you mean? Like. Like, cause it, when you, when the blood's in your lungs, it's all in capillaries, isn't it? In little thingies, veins and that. Yeah. yeah. Is vessels. it always in veins in the heart, or does does the vein of carver just drop it off into this saggy, flappy bag? Well, so there's no valve in between the vein of carver and the atrium, so it, so it's just like loose. Well, it's not loose. Like, there's no air in the heart. It, it the atrium's just full of blood, or yeah, it's not full of loose blood. 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 What do you mean by loose, though? I don't understand the difference between it being in the atrium to it being in a vein. Yeah, I guess so. But it just feels like it's bigger in the atrium, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's loose. It's not loose, though. <laughs> it's tightly packed in there. Like in Tower of Terror, they let too many people into those little bits where you have to listen to the video. It's not relatable content. <laughs> so goes into the atrium, and then the, the right ventricle will pump out the blood that's got in it and then it will open again and it will all of the blood from the atrium into the ventricle through the one-way valve. This one is called the tricuspid valve, but you don't need to remember that. So, so hang on a minute. It goes in the atrium. Yep. And then it it fills itself up. It pumps it into the bottom one, into the vestibule. Yep. Why doesn't it just go straight in there? Why does it have to stop in the top one? Because the bottom one, I think, is already full of blood. And then it pumps out that blood, and then it sucks in the atrium's blood. So where's the blood from the bottom one going? Into the left-hand side? No, that's where. that's kind of where the story's going now. I'm so confused, Ron. So the ventricle pumps the blood. It goes through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery. Okay? And then that blood goes to the lungs. The inferior and the superior, they're both going into the top right cupboard, yeah? The the right atrium, yes. The top one. Yes, it is on top, but yeah, okay. it's not really part of it. Okay. It still works if you hang upside down like a bat. <laughs> so they all go in there, some blood goes in there. Okay. Yes, and then it goes to the I next bit, and then it goes I, I, out again. Ronald! Ronald! And then the flap goes, and all the blood droops into the bottom cupboard. Yep. W- why doesn't it just go... Why isn't that one big cupboard... Why does it need to be two different things? What happens to it in the first one that means that that is a necessary step in the process? Because when it's in the ventricle, it's in between two one-way valves. So it's in between the tricuspid valve, that's in between the atrium and the ventricle, and it's in between and then there's the pulmonary valve as well that is in between the ventricle and the um uh the pulmonary artery. So when it's in there, it can give it a really good fucking squeeze and we know that it's going to go in the right direction because it's in between two one-way valves. Okay, Whereas... so it goes into the top path. That's number one. Then it gets valvey pumped down into the bottom one. Yep. Uh, Just the waits right around in there for a second. Yep, momentarily. And then... The... Watches another video. But the, the ventricles Ooh, down at the spooky. bottom... Spooky! The ventricles down at the bottom are the bits that have the muscles, and they're the actual pumps. Okay. So it then will squeeze. So then that gets all squeezy in, and then it goes left. Then it goes through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary article. It doesn't move into the second half of the heart yet. What? It goes out the heart again. What? Yeah. Yeah. What if it's raining? That's the worst bit when you think you've got to the indoor queuing bit and then it makes you go back out again. The bloody crash crush ride does that. So wait, when then when then where's it going? It's hopping out of the heart for a minute. Yeah, so all of the blood that we've talked about so far, that is deoxygenated blood that is coming from the body, right? If you say so. I'm telling you that. <laughs> 
It's all deoxygenated blood. So then it leaves through the pulmonary artery. So we can work out what that does by its name. Pulmonary means lungs. Artery means away from the heart. So it's going out of the heart to the lungs, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so up there, down there. Off to the lungs. Yep. So then the deoxygenated blood oh, goes that to the looks lungs. Like boobs, actually. Let Tasty just... oxygen coming in from the lungs. More we'll learn more about the lungs in a bit, so don't worry too much about them just I'm now. I'm just trying to make my drawing of lungs look less like two boob kidney beans. Okay, okay. Now they look like hairy balls. <laughs> I tried to get some capillary veins, and now they look yeah, like... Yeah, that's a ball sack. Never like I've a seen nasty one. scrote. I'll write lungs so I know what's happening. OK, so the pulmonary artery is going to the lungs, OK? Yep, goes to the lungs, feasts on oxygen, takes all of the oxygen out of the air that you've just breathed in, and then it's going to head back to the heart to the other side, OK? OK, so then oxygen comes in... The blood tastes freedom. It sees the light of day up your throat. But no, it's sucked back in to the top half of the heart on the left-hand side. Yep, to the left atrium. Going back up into the vestibule. Goes Through in there. the pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins. So this is now oxygenated blood, OK? Yep, I like this. Okay. Yeah, so it's in the left ventric uh, yeah, sorry, the left atrium. Yep. And then the exact same mechanism, it'll get sucked into the left ventricle and then the left ventricle will pump and it will push the blood through the aorta, which you've probably heard of. Aorta of <laughs> around the body. Oh, come on, Ron, that one was fine. Aorta, I hardly knew it. <laughs> And then the aorta goes out off round the body. Yeah, through the aortic valve into the aorta. What's the jugular? I think the jugular is the artery that takes blood to the head, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, I've done a drawing. It sort of looks like a butterfly that's been run over next to a ball sack. Do you want to show me your drawing? Yeah, it got messier than I'd have liked, but I think... (laughs) pretty good fucking hell do you (laughs) not know what a heart looks like (laughs) that I've drawn a heart I'm not very good at drawing so I just do some shapes yeah you've drawn them on the wrong sides as well no no you said the left and the right oh it might just be mirrored because of the the zoom call which side's left left I guess if you put that in me it would be not my left and right now yeah, but that's that kind is, of that. That's that's the thing is that your heart has the same left and right as you. So when you look at it, it's the other way around. I'm imagining that I'm getting that like a transfer tattoo on me, so it is the right way around. Do you know how the heart regulates its beating? Mm, I'm going to shock you here, Ron, but I don't know. <laughs> So there's actually a group of cells in uh, in the right atrium that um, connect to the nerves in your heart and literally just, like, send out a little pulse at a regular um, interval and act like a pacemaker. So when someone has a, an artificial pacemaker inserted into their heart, it's this that they are sort of replacing or fixing. And then what happens is this sort of electrical signal then goes all the way down to the bottom of the heart um, through an insulated um, nerve in the septum of the heart, I think. And then it gets to the bottom. When it gets to the bottom, it will then the, the impulse will then split and go up both sides of the ventricle. And then as it goes, it will compress from the bottom and squeeze all of the blood out of the heart. So it's just your brain thinks about it and then it happens. Well, no, there's a group of cells in the heart that make it happen. Yeah, but you said then then they go and get a brain impulse. No, I didn't. I said it was a nerve impulse. Oh, say it it all again then, because I don't think I was listening. Pacemaker in the right atrium, that sends out the the Oh, a pacemaker. It sets the pace. Yes. Oh. Did you black out for 45 seconds before... (laughs) 
<laughs> Sometimes when you're when you start talking, I don't listen because of stuff going on, and then with the rest of what you're saying, I'm thinking I don't know what this means because I didn't listen to the first bit, and then I'm thinking. Ah, so when he stops talking and starts looking at me, what shall I say to make it look like I've understood? So then I end up not hearing any of it because I've been thinking about how to solve the problem of not having heard the first bit. Yeah, I do that at work quite a lot. But no, so there's a pacemaker in the right atrium. It's there's sending a out these. Pacemaker yes. in the right atrium. I'll it's sending out blips on a regular basis when you're when you're resting. Okay. Yep. Then, in the middle of your heart, there's a septum. Hmm, like in my nose. Yeah, well, it's exactly the same. It basically, it's like a wall that blocks the two halves off. Is your septum, like, really weird shape, or is yours just straight? I don't know. Mine's got a big bend in it. What, well, inside? Yeah. No, I think mine's normal. That way sticks out, and that way, it's like a moon shape. It goes... That's... Ooh. That's weird. Yeah. Um, Okay. Can you breathe through both sides of your nose at the same time? Most of the time, yeah. I can't. I can only ever breathe through one side at a time. I know why that is, actually. Why? So, you know, like, when you've got a cold, one side... Well, apparently your life is like this all the time. That's fucked up, but fine. Um, so, in normal people... Um, like, you only really notice that when you've got a cold, and it'll be you can only breathe through one nostril at a time, and then the other one gets blocked. So... It's because your nose naturally regulates airflow through each nostril because some smells are better to be smelt slowly and some smells are better to be smelt quickly. So oh. it will regulate it so that you can get maximum smellage. That's fun. Yeah. I must be missing out on so many smells. Yeah. So we've got a pacemaker up in the top right. Yeah. That's sending out blips going, oh, do a squeeze, oh, do a squeeze, oh. Do a squeeze. Yeah, so the, the thing to know about this is that it sends the blip down a ve uh, down a nerve that is in the septum. Okay, You've got a nerve. This nerve is insulated. So when it's travelling down the in septum... In a myelin sheath. Yes. Down the septum, it's not... Can you not... please be impressed when I say helpful things? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> the wind's picking up. I should probably close the... So that's in an insulated sheath, yep. Yep, when it's going down there, it's insulated, so it's not triggering anything. It gets to the bottom of the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's not insulated anymore, so uh -oh. as it travels back up the We've ventricle We've got some raw walls, nerve! It triggers the compressing, so it squeezes from the bottom and therefore gets all of the lovely blood out of the heart. So the nerve is like a horseshoe shape. More like an anchor, because it goes up both sides. Oh, OK. All right. It looks a bit like a, a co an IUD coil. That's what hmm. they look like. Yeah, I've seen one. It's gnarly. Whoa, how deep were you going down on her? <laughs> well, <laughs> gross. No, let's not do that. Um, the bit that gives me the willies about it is the um, the threads that they have to leave so you can mm. yank it back out again. The fact that that's just always there, horrific. Yeah, but then if you've got one, you're like, it's no weirder than the like metal T-junction that's sitting just above that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, moving on. Um, <laughs> women's rapidly diminishing body choices. <laughs> the body contains three different types of blood vessel. I, we've named all of them, so I won't quiz you on them. Arteries, veins, capillaries. Arteries, veins and capillaries. Yes. It says that students capillary should be Capillary sounds like a type of monkey, doesn't it? As much as anything, I guess. <laughs> Somebody's grumpy today. I think you should have had more to eat before we recorded. I'm not grumpy. Or are you just really enjoying the subject so you don't want my nonsense? <laughs> yeah, a bit. It's biology <laughs> week. We're in it. We're doing it. And I'm concentrating. Look at all these notes. Yeah, we're having a lovely time. My heart time. looks even worse now I've drawn that nerve in it. Look, now the heart looks like a ball sack as well. Yeah, that's going to mean fuck all to you next week. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so it says students should be able to explain how the structure of these vessels relates to their function. Okay? Okay. So Should I arteries, be able to do that now? Uh, well, we're, we're going to discuss it. Oh, cool. So arteries, they're taking blood out of the heart. So mm-hmm. how do you think they might be adapted to that job? Downward sloping. What? <laughs> They just slope away from the heart. Let gravity help. No. <laughs> Try again. Um, muscular. Kind of. Oh, wicked. But so they're right next. They're taking the blood out. So they're going to be under the most intense pressure because they're right next to where the pump is pumping it. Okay? Oh, so they're going to be tough. Yeah. So they have got tough walls. Oh, okay. Tough walls. Whereas the veins are a bit saggier. Are they like a new build? They've just got shitter walls. Uh, yeah. And then you have capillaries. So capillaries are very, very small, little, um, uh, thin, thin little blood vessels. Hey, uh, living space. I've written in my notes, Laura, you're a white woman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're so observant, Ron. When you push your, if you put your, if you push your skin and it goes all white, that is because you have pushed all of the blood out of the capillaries in that area. Oh, poor capillaries. They're very thin. They're basically so that you can get blood into all areas of your tissues and your body parts and whatnot. Okay. And then because and is of... a capillary basically a small vein or a small artery? Well, they're kind of their own thing because in veins and arteries, the idea is kind of just to get the blood from A to B as quickly, like from either to the heart or from the heart mm-hmm. to where it's supposed to go. Whereas capillaries are more designed to allow the oxygen out and the CO2 in. Got it. So, yeah, so they're, they're made out of different stuff. Um, I, oh, I think you're going to like this. I think this, uh, I have to double check this, but I think the cells that capillaries are made out of are called squamous cells. Squamous! Let me Aww. just double check that. John yes. Squamous. The squamous epithelium is is the like the sort of the name for squamous uh, epithelium feels like like a a right wing pundit that pops up on Twitter one day and is a knob for for likes. <laughs> um, yes, so that's capillaries. Um, that that's the blood vessels. They all make sense. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So now we're going to move on to the lungs. Do you know what the purpose of the lungs is? Um, look fit. Push your tits out. I've got to be honest, I'm watching videos on Twitter instead of listening. Um, the lungs, they are an exchange surface for oxygen and carbon dioxide. They have a large surface area. Beautiful, yes. Do you know much about the structure of the lungs? They have a large surface area and take advantage of concentration gradients. Uh, Yeah, you've kind of jumped ahead, actually. Um, uh, One of the questions I was going to ask you is... um, uh, uh, So, yeah, they've got a large surface area... There, this is brought about by a structure called the alveoli. Yes, um, the garlic dip. Yeah, they look like yeah, like um, knobs of garlic or like bunches of grapes or something. These so, um, these structures um, are covered in capillaries, so that there's lots of so blood. So you swarm in with capillaries. I think I might have told you this before, but if you took all of the alveoli in your lungs and flattened them out to get all the surface area, it would be about the size of a tennis court. Mind blown, Ron. I know. Do you know much about the the rest of the structure of the lungs? Mm, there's two bits. So you have the the windpipe, the jugular. No, that's called the the trachea. Um, the trachea, yeah. Like like a tracheotomy. And then yeah, it's kind of like two bags, isn't it, on either side? Yeah. Um, so one's bigger than the other. Yep, yeah, one's bigger than the other because one. Oh shit! Is that right? Yeah. So one has a has a bit missing, kind of where the heart is. Oh. Why yep, does so all the, the track... important stuff go in the same place? It feels like you want to spread that out a bit, doesn't it? 
Well, it's all there protected behind the ribs. Yeah, but my ribs aren't very strong. Yeah, but you're just a, a brittle, breakable, <gasps> peach bruisey person. Tiny bird lady. I have got yeah. this little bruise. Yeah, it's because... <laughs> That's where Mackie licked me. <laughs> it's because you're weak. <laughs> Boo! Um, so the trachea splits into two tubes that then go to each of the lungs. These are called the bronchi, or singularly the bro- a bronchus. Oh, mate, we're going to the bronchus. <laughs> These we got then, the New York lungs. Then when these are in the lungs, they split into secondary and then tertiary bronchi. Tertiary bronchi. He's just a tertiary bronchi. <laughs> and then when they get very, very small, they um, will split into things called bronchioles. Bronchioles. And then the bronchioles end in the alveoli, which we've discussed before. Yep, I've done a really good drawing of that. <laughs> So we've got the large surface area because of the alveoli. We've got the lots of capillaries to get the the blood supply pumping. Got Can this you party think of the pumping on a Saturday night? I think we discussed this before. Can you think of the other thing that um, the lungs are to increase the 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 diffusion of the gases? Thin walls. Yep, yeah, that's very true. Not what I was thinking of, but yep. Yeah. Um, hang on, let me go and find my notes on exchange surfaces. God, scrooping back through this book is really... At the end of this, we should auction this book off. Oh, yeah. Use salt to kill slugs, that's not helpful. <laughs> um, uh, muck death, I don't even know what that's talking about. Where were we doing exchange surfaces? Oh, no, I think it might have been one of those middle episodes where I just didn't make notes for a while. Yeah, that did happen. Because it goes from Chemistry 3 to Episode 9. No, wait, that's right. Chemistry 3 would be Episode 9. Didn't you do some episodes in the back of the book? Why did I write (laughs) Butter.com? (laughs) Butter.com? What does that mean? Stem cells, totipotent, was that it? No. Ugh, resultant forces. I should tear that page out of the book. Butter.com is, if you go to it, it's just a picture of some toast with some heart-shaped butter on it. <laughs> no, I haven't got any notes on that bit. Um, so They're what wet. else was it? They're wet? Yeah. Oh, I'd never have got that in a month of Mondays. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's why it's blood in it a out. solution. It is, but there's not just blood in your lungs. If there's blood in your lungs, you've got problems. This isn't. I think this is what's confusing me. What is my body full of then? What do you mean? I thought the blood was just like loose and stuff. No, that's how. The blood is always in the veins and stuff, is it? Yeah. And then so what's everything else? Cells. What? What kind of cells? Well, different types of cells: muscle cells, fat cells, bones. Organ cells. So the heart is really the only bit where it's loose, and even then it's not that loose. It's never loose. If it's <laughs> loose, you've got problems. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? Like, no. I thought blood was going to be sloshing a bit more. No, that's like that's how insects work. So they have something called an open circulatory system. So basically the blood does just... They are basically just a bag of blood, and then they have a tube from their ass to their head that has, like, 12 hearts, and it pumps ass blood to the head and it just goes round and round great insects summer they're living a slam in life yeah none of this tightly regulated nonsense so so what are they wet with these lungs then just water yeah and also something called surfactant that sounds like a cleaning fluid surfactant what's that so Interestingly, with the alveoli, these structures are so delicate that the water tension in the water that wets your lungs would destroy Wet them. Lungs. Would destroy the alveoli and Sounds crush like an your insult, lungs from he? inside. Oh, Look you at got him. Well wet lungs. He looks like he's got wet lungs, don't he? All, all right, wet lungs. Get back to Loserville. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the the surface tension of the water in your lung, the the wetness in your lungs, 
would crush the alveoli. So there's something called surfactant that is just like it's kind of like a chemical, a naturally made chemical that's in your lungs, stops the surface tension. Um, sometimes babies are born without surfactant, and then they have real trouble breathing. Oh, can you can you pump it in? Yeah, I don't think it's fatal. Oh, that's good. So, so these capillaries and the uh, uh, ioli is all over the thing, and those are floating in just water. No. What They're else at- is it in our lungs then? Like a muscle. Yeah, well, it's just lung meat. Ugh. But what's the meat then doing? Lung. I. It's well. It's, it's just kind of like tessellating alveoli joined by tubes with blood vessels going through it. In water. No, it's not in water. It's just all wet. <laughs> so what else is there? So just air around it. No, l- lung meat. <laughs> tubes. So there's just tubes packed together with tubes, and there's no gaps. No. Okay. There's not really any like uh, apart from like. So my whole body is just full. It's there's all no, functional. Yeah, there's, there's, no there's gaps anywhere. There's no like brown that's... sites in your body where it's like, yeah, we were thinking about building something here, <laughs> but actually we decided not to. Yeah. Right. Like the closest thing that humans have to that is fat because that's not really doing anything, but then it is an energy reserve. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Like yeah, y- your <laughs> sort of inclination that Animals are bags. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, and like the bags are certain size and you'll fill it up with as much as you need. But, I've you know, always maybe. felt like a bag. Like my legs and stuff, they feel like they're just solid getting on. Yeah, they're machine. I, I thought my torso just had a bit more just cracking on space in it. No, not really. Yeah, all right. Is that everything we've got to learn today? We're just going to do a little bit on blood, but not much. Okay. So, um, I've sub-bit, not just Spike and Angel's favourite food, also an essential component of many creatures. (laughs) I like that you're sort of writing these notes just for you, really, and then (laughs) you get up the courage to read them out sometimes. It's very cute. But yeah, well, it's because sometimes I do write funny stuff in my notes, but then I don't want to just be like, here's a joke I wrote for myself while I was doing this. That's my whole life, (laughs) Ron. That's all I do for a living. (laughs) Hey, guys, look at me. I thought of this thing earlier. Um, What can you tell me about blood, Laura? What are you doing? Stretching my spine. What's this little dance you're doing? A little spinny dance. (laughs) Yeah, try it. It feels good. I don't like that. Um, what was the question? <laughs> what do you know about blood? It's busy. It's packed in. It's never got a moment of freedom. <laughs> There's no loose blood. No. I suppose loose blood is like a bruise, isn't it? Well, that's bleeding. <laughs> so if I've got a bruise, is that a vein is broken and some blood's, like, got out? I think that's smashed capillaries, but I might oh, be wrong. Oh, babies. Oh, no. And then they're all sad and the blood goes yellow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel sorry for my capillaries now. So have I got weak capillaries? Is that why I bruise so much? Yeah, maybe. I've got soft capillaries. (laughs) Anyway, what can I tell you about blood? Blood is made in bone marrows. Um, Bone cave. Blood comes in red and white variations. Um, It's blue sometimes. Like on those little wrist bits under your yep, watch. So those are. Um, so your blood actually changes colour um, based on how oxygenated it is. And how happy you are. No. Like a mood ring, you know, when you put that fish on your. It's like, whoa, you're a sceptical person because the fish has fallen off your hand. Your blood's a bit like that. If it's green, you fancy the boy next to you. Have you stopped listening? Yeah, sorry, I was just finding something out because I thought you were going to ask me something. Um, Blood comes in cells? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Blood cells. Yeah. It doesn't come in the cells, though. It's made of cells. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. It com- comes in cells. Like, that's what it comes in. This is... I don't want to get into this with you right now because this sounds like one of these weird beliefs that you have about the world, like glass isn't real or (laughs) we're just bags. How does the blood get out of my bones? I don't know. Uh, What a shame. (laughs) Sorry. I just can't get over that bones make blood. That just feels like that is one job too many for bones to be up to, you know? Like, they're in charge of us being upright and all sorts. And then it's like, can you just um, make the blood as well while you're at it? What? So what blood, else do you need to know about blood? <laughs> Have um, I finished it? Blood is basically blood Thicker cells... Thicker than water! ...and platelets suspended in plasma. So, as you said, there what are... What was it? Platelets and what in blood plasma? Blood cells. Erythrocytes. So, red blood cells... Do you know what they're for? Um, oxygen... Yeah, they carry the oxygen. So they, um, they uh, that is all they do, and they have jettisoned everything within themselves that oh. doesn't do that. So red blood cells don't even have a nucleus. Whoa. Um, which means that they can't replicate, which is why they have to be made in the bone marrow. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, so they are filled with a protein called haemoglobin, I've heard of that. Yeah, so haemoglobin is the protein that binds and carries oxygen. (laughs) Haemoglobin is made out of four parts of it, right? And then each one of those is centred around an iron atom, which is where the iron in your blood is. This sounds wrong. Well, it's the the iron in this protein that bonds with the oxygen and then keeps it and then transports it around. The fuck did we end up with this system? You've got to put a little bit of tiny metal rivet in each blood cell and then that catches the oxygen and then that's got to get in a squashy bag and go into the... Oh, this is banana's way to be alive. There's got to be an easier way to do it than this. Believe it or not, this is the best way that life has figured out in billions of years. Yeah, that's cuckoo, c- isn't it? Yeah. Red blood cells look like delicious sweeties and they come from bone caves. Mm-hmm. They're like little pillowy nugs and then they've got like a dip in the middle. Yeah, they look like abacus beads. Yeah. Then we have white blood cells. There are lots of different types of white blood cells. Um, but essentially they, they form kind of the backbone of your immune system. So they will attack infection, collect antigens. Sometimes they just kind of carpet bomb your own cells to kill the insurgents. They have many functions. And they're just hanging around with the red blood cells in your blood. Well, yeah, they float around, but they're also highly mobile. um, And they can also... Flagella. I I think cilia on um, white blood cells, but I might be wrong. They can... They're they're highly mobile. They can actually slip in between other cells um, and like, in between them to get into your tissues and whatnot. Oh, so they're Um, like the emergency services? Yeah, absolutely. They're so good at doing this that they do have a nucleus, but they actually have a lobed nucleus. So the nucleus is kind of split into smaller little bits connected by bits of membrane so that it can fit through a smaller gap. Whoa. Yeah. I actually did just put wow with an exclamation mark after that in my notes. (laughs) And I said it out loud. Um, And then the last bit, and the last thing we'll do today, is platelets. So these are just... Tiny little plates. They are fragments of larger cells that are in your bone marrow, and basically they just help your blood clot. So they're kind of like, if you have a scab, a lot of that's going to be platelets. Uh. All right, Ron. That felt reasonable. Yeah, that all makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I just felt all the blood move from one part of my heart to the other. Mm. Listen to those valves slap. I wonder if you can hear mine. No, no we can't. No, we can't hear it, Laura. I can. Ow, that was loud. All right, let's get out of here. (laughs) Okay, we'll see you in a second for the quiz. It's quizzing time. Hi, Ronnie Honks. Hiya, how are you doing? Um, I'm good, I'm 
good. I'm all right. I've been away sailing over the weekend. Oh, lovely. With the family. Let's see how much got swashed out of my brain. All right, you ready? Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's 12 points spread over three questions. All right. This first one is worth six points in total. Whoa. I would like you to please describe the journey of blood through the heart, starting with the vena cava. Oh, piss off. I just explained to Tom downstairs. Hey, actually, I've got a question. Um, it's not how this works. <laughs> You know how nothing is sloshing about in your body? You're not a bag of goo, yes. Yeah. is But your tummy is sloshy, yeah? You know when you drink too much tea and then you wiggle and you can hear it sloshing? Yeah, when you drink liquids, there's liquids in you, but it, there's not... I think where the departure is, is that there is no surface... There's no water surface in your stomach. Even in your tummy? Yeah, no. So how do you hear it sloshing? Because the liquid's moving around in there. But there must be a gap then for it to slosh. No, because liquids can move even if there's no air. But it doesn't make a sound. If you shake a full bag, it doesn't slosh, does it? Yeah, but it might if there was, like, hunks of chicky nuggies and stuff that you'd eaten the night before. Yeah, OK. Like, because the, the thing is, that I know that in your head... You're picturing some sort of anthropomorphised, like, swimming pool arrangement where there's, like, a <laughs> surface level and all of the gremlins that you imagine live inside you, like, diving in and out and stuff. But so it's not my, like that. does my stomach shrink to just nothing when it's empty, then? I think so. Oh. Well, no, I, well, I don't think it necessarily shrinks, but in the same way that when a bag's empty, it's not got lots of air in it. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Like, it doesn't shrink, it'll just be, like, flat. OK. I used to th think it was a table and all the food, like, fell down and landed on the table and then little people inside would chop it all up and then scoosh it down different pipes as to whether it was a pudding or vegetables and stuff. Yeah, I think children's art around the body has a lot to answer for your mental persuasions. Yeah, I think what I'm learning about myself is whatever the first thing I learn is, that stays in. And then <laughs> any any subsequent updates. Like, I still keep thinking, yeah, atoms are like plum puddings. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying to me that you taught me a wrong one because that's really stayed in my head. Right, what was this question? <laughs> Can you do the journey of blood as it goes through the heart, please? Right. From the vena cava. Which vena cava, inferior or superior? Ooh. Ooh. You may choose. OK. Well, <laughs> it goes in from the vena cava into um, the number one pod of the heart. And that is just a holding cell for stuff. Then, I'm not sure what that says, something like the c c cuspid val al valve. The cuspid valve pumps it into the bottom pod unless it came in via the inferior vena cava, in which case it went straight into the bottom pod, I think. Then I'm it goes let you just, then I'm it letting you crack on. <laughs> then it goes out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs slash ball bags. And then it funnies about in the lungs, does um does um some does some um um c concentration gradient stuff. Huh? Yep. <laughs> we're only concerning the heart. Don't worry too much. We're not talking about the lungs. In in the alleoles, <clears throat> then it goes by the pulmonary vein into the top left ventribule. Then. I don't know then. It just goes down again through another valve. No mention of what that's called. <laughs> and then hangs out in the bottom left for a bit. And then it leaves via the aorta and some saggy old veins. Squamos? <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> 
I don't think you mean, are you done? I think you mean, uh, well done, Laura. That's correct, hopefully. I'm giving you a generous two out of six for that. Oh, what? I thought that was pretty thorough. Yeah, it's just you avoided saying... Naming basically any parts of the heart <laughs> while you were going through. So, firstly, the inferior and superior vena cava. No, they both go into the right atrium. A word that you completely missed out of this um, the, this explanation. No, the 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 inferior does not go straight into the ventricle. You die. Um, then, then you said the valve pumps it through into the bottom bit. That, ev- that's not even a biology word. That's not what valves are. That's not what valves do. Valves What's don't valve pump. Do? A valve is like uh, it's like a one-way system. But you didn't ask me about the pumping. I know the pumping happens from the coil. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, like even if you hadn't said. The valve, you still didn't say atrium or ventricle or any of the I words. I think I did say ventricle. You said vest. You said vestibule, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you said it in in reference to an atrium. Oh, f- ah. You did say um, uh, cuspid valve. That is the name of it. Yes. Um, the other one's the bicuspid. So uh, vena cava into right atrium. What would have been one mark? Through the valve into the right ventricle would have been another mark. Goes through the pulmonary artery into the lungs. That's one of the marks you got. Yes. Then through the pulmonary, uh, through the lungs, through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. Yes, I said that. You said into the left vestibule. I said the top left one. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Not enough. (gasps) Um, Then through the... Why do I need to know that, though? I'm not a doctor. Because I'm asking you questions on it, which is why you need to know But if I say the top left one, we know what I mean. No, we don't. You are It's quite confusing because it's not actually on the left. It's on the right when you look at it. It's just called the left atrium because it's flipped because you have a heart inside you. Oh, then I've drawn this wrong. (laughs) Yes, you have. I told you this last week. (laughs) Then through that valve into the left ventricle. And then out through the bicuspid into the aorta and round the body. I gave you a mark for that as well. Two I think you're being unnecessarily difficult about that. I think you're being quite flippant about the format. Fine, next question. Okay. Sick what are of the this. What are the three adaptations of the lungs that we discussed last week? They were made into a film and a Netflix series. And also a Broadway musical. (laughs) Don't just shake your head silently. (laughs) Applaud my joke. (laughs) Adaptation. I hate you. If I have to do the science bit right, you should have to join in on the comedy bit. Oh, all right, do it again. What, what are the No, three... I'm not doing it again. Don't patronise Do it again. Me. No. Do it again. What's the what question? What are the three adaptations no. of the... <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> what, are the, what are the three adaptations of the, the lungs that we discussed? What does that mean, Ron? Well, you know what an adaptation is in biology, No. I think something that can be adapted to its inv- environment or role to, to do its function. Like camouflage. <laughs> yeah, that's an example. <laughs> no? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I thought we weren't doing the lungs. I thought we were doing the heart. In the last question, yeah, but now oh. I asked a question about the lungs. <laughs> oh, hang on, let me turn the page. I've got some notes on the <laughs> Yes! Let's have like, a look. <laughs> for example, an adaptation of birds is that their bones are hollow so that they're what? lighter so they can fly. Where do they make their blood? In their bones. So how are they hollow? I think they're full of marrow, but the the bone, the boniness of them. 
They're kind of like a sponge on the inside. Yuck. What's the question? <laughs> Three adaptations of the lungs, please, Laura. Um, large surface area. Yep, ding. One point. Uh, I mean, I don't need to explain this to you, so I'll just say surfactant. <laughs> you do need to explain it to me. <laughs> well, don't you know? I do, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feels like you don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's like cleaning. It sounds like a cleaning product. <laughs> I probably made that joke last week. It says, I've just written down, water is too strong for capillaries, Bronx. <laughs> so, does the surfactant... That's, that's not even true. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't wasn't that something about the capillaries going white? Get wet? <laughs> is that was that it? Yes, white lung syndrome. <laughs> if they get too wet, that's what drowning is. Um, well, they they have surfactant in them. They do, but unless you can tell me what that does, I'm not giving you anything. Oh, have they got iron in them? Was that something we talked about? No. No. An iron lung, what's that then? That's like when you go into a machine and it breathes oh. for you. Okay. Um, how many of these do you want? Three. And you're not oh. counting surfactant, even though it's right. <laughs> that word that you've written down. <laughs> um, so there's loads of capillaries. Are they wet? Wetness. It's not the capillaries that are wet. The lungs are wet. The lungs are wet. Lung Why wet. does that help? Because diffusion happens better in a solution. Close enough. I'll give you a point. Yes. One more. Uh, I don't know the third one. Well, it's um, uh, the, the, the blood flow we, we talked about. I um, let your blood flow. Lots of capillaries, lots of fresh blood for the diffusion of the gases. Well, that's not the lungs that have done that, though. Yes, it is. That's no, it where isn't. It's what is doing that, then? The heart is pumping. Yeah, the heart is pumping, but there are lots of capillaries in I the lungs. I said loads of capillaries, surface area. No, you said that water is too strong for the capillaries, no. and if they get wet, they'll go white. <laughs> I thought that's what you said happened. I thought you said... I said a uh, big surface area. And what is the surface area? It's the capillaries. No, it's not. It's the alveoli. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the things that look like a bunch of grapes. I, you keep saying this. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, <because laughs> yeah, and I was very generous. I gave you a point for large surface area <laughs> without you saying alveoli. Two out of three on that one. That ain't bad, in the words of Meatloaf. And then, finally, what are the three blood cells that we discussed, and what are their jobs? Uh, oh, hang on. No, I know this. You've got red blood cells. They only carry oxygen. They've, like, devolved, evolved, devolved to be super simple little baskets of oxygen. The white blood cells. I'll give you a mark for that, by the way. That was that was very correct. And also, those are the ones that have the iron in them. It's the iron that bonds with the oxygen, so they can take them around. Yes, via hemoglobin, a protein. Yes, a globular protein. Yeah. Then white blood cells have a lobed nucleus to help them... Squ oh, yeah, they squudge in between other cells. And they're like the emergency services. There's loads of types of white blood cells. Yep, yeah, define um, emergency services in this <laughs> context. Uh, you know, if you need something, they'll be there. <laughs> I mean, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> are they scabs? Scabs. White blood cells are scabs? No, they support unions like everyone else on this podcast. Nice, Ron. <laughs> Join a union. Um, no, but like... If something goes wrong, the white blood cells get there. Come on. Like, just so close. Just bring this all together. 
and and and, and name it. Squamos. <laughs> no, squamos are in the capillaries. I haven't written that down, Ron. No, you just wrote squamos. Um. Yeah, they fight infections. Yes, which is part of your... Immune system. Thank the good Lord, yes. <laughs> I have written that down, actually, I just didn't say it. Yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. And then so the by th- emergency <laughs> services, you might have wanted to say it, they're part of your immune system. <laughs> yeah, OK. Is platelets the other one? You tell me. Well, it's the only other thing I've written down, but then I've also written down that platelets and blood cells are in plasma, which suggests to me that they're not a blood cell. No, it is platelets. Okay, good. They help your blood clot. Yes, they are the ones that form They're the scabs. Yeah. They're the union-busting wankers. Yeah, Uh, yeah, they're basically fragments of cells that come from your bone marrow and help it clot. All right, yeah. well and done, And that's me. the quiz, so three out of three on that one. So overall, you got one, two, three, four, seven out of 12. Over 50%, yeah, which is, boy. I believe, a pass mark at GCSE. <laughs> we can hope. All right. All right. I mean, please don't tell Ron, but I actually really enjoyed that episode. Never tell him. But I think that might be one of the ones that actually felt the most practical. You know, like maybe I could be a doctor, not just based off that episode. <laughs> Imagine that if you go going for surgery and I rocked up. No. Um, but listen, hey, I can't remember any of the names of the stuff, but some of that's gone in. So I'm happy. Um, now to business before I let you go for another week of, of happiness. Ha- are officially now on sale. You might have seen on our social media that we have invested in the three different types of hats, a couple of baseball caps and a bubble hat, and they are on sale now. So head to coffee.com, ko-fi.com forward slash Lorelex forward slash shop, and you should see the three different hats for sale. We really hope you like them. We're really happy with how they've turned out. Um, So please grab one if you want one first edition merch uh we have kept the order very minimal because as you'll appreciate being the tiniest podcast in town um we have no idea whether we'll sell one or all of them so we've kept it very small so if you do want one grab one this week if not today um uh and um we love you and send us pictures when when you when it arrives and you're wearing it um yes please we want to see that uh now i don't know how to end the episode without ron here um because normally he'd class dismiss us. Um, so I, I think I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> class dismissed. Class dismissed. Um, class continued. Should we just carry on? Shall I edit? Uh, I don't know what to... Um, just bye? It's sad without Ron's catchphrase. Maybe I'll get him to record a video and I'll put it on the Instagram so that it is dismissed. Otherwise, we're just going to feel like we're in the lesson forever. Um, Anyway, have a lovely week and I love you very much. Goodbye. (laughs) 